Hi, it's Sunday afternoon and I just finished giving my sermon at Lordship Community Church and a uh, beautiful sunny day here in Connecticut and I wanted to record my sermon for those of you who couldn't make it and I know there were a few people who said they wanted to hear it. Um, the scripture lesson that I uh, based my sermon on was Matthew 25 verses 31 through 46 and my sermon is about the butterfly effect. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. What if I were to tell you that what you do this week could change the future of the world forever? Would you believe me? Would you stand taller in hope or think that I was off my rocker? There's a principle called chaos theory or the butterfly effect, which in essence says that many big problems and events are often started with small beginnings. The theory is that a butterfly could flap its wings in one part of the world and move molecules of air that would in turn move more molecules of air that would set things in motion and could eventually cause a hurricane to hit the shores of New England. The theory was originally laughed at by the science community, but then in the 90s, a group of physics professors put the theory to the test, and they proved that not only was it accurate, but that it worked every time. And not just with butterflies, with everything that moved matter, including people. You know, when I was small, I was the oldest, and by the time I was five years old, my parents had four kids. So getting everyone up and dressed and ready to go to church on Sunday was a chore. I had a cousin who was my same age and we always enjoyed hanging out together. And she would ask my aunt to bring me to church with them. So one of my aunts would come and pick me up on Sunday mornings and bring me to church. You know, as I was thinking about the butterfly effect this week, I realized that that small act may have changed the direction of my life without my aunt or my cousin even realizing it or knowing it. If my cousin didn't like me, if my aunt hadn't gone out of her way to come pick me up on Sunday mornings, if my parents hadn't encouraged me, if I didn't go to Sunday school when I was a kid, I'm not sure that I would be teaching Sunday school at my current church or leading a Bible study or preaching. And you know, most of my friends I've met through church and through attending Bible studies, I would probably have a totally different group of friends too. You see, every flap of your wings, every breath you take, every action you perform, the things you do, the words you say, they all matter. They matter to your life and they matter in the lives of others. The bad news is that it works both ways, both good and bad. And the butterfly effect turns into problems and struggles instead of success and accomplishments. Many people hear the negatives in their schools, in their jobs, in their songs we sing, in the news reports they listen to on the radio and watch television. And then we see people who compare themselves to others and feel badly because they don't measure up. You know, I'm guilty of this too. I'll hear someone singing and say, I wish I could sing like that. Or I wish I could lose weight and look like her. And sometimes we get totally caught up in trying to keep up and outdo that we lose sight of all that we have to offer. And we believe that we don't measure up or matter. You know, I keep hearing about the heroin epidemic in our local neighborhoods. People are hurting and they're seeking ways to get away from it all. Andy Andrews, who wrote the book, The Butterfly Effect, he says that everyone is either just coming out of a crisis, in a crisis, or about to enter a crisis. And how people handle stressful situations is crucial. And maybe, 
just maybe a helping hand, a kind word, a thoughtful gesture will change their world and set the butterfly effect in motion in a positive way. There's a Japanese proverb that says, one kind word can warm three winter months. One small act of love can make all the difference. As Christians, we need to bring more light into the world. We need to be lifting people up. We need to watch what we say, how we act, what we do, and we need to ask God every day to be in those small decisions that guide our lives. We need to seek God's guidance to help us be a positive influence on others, especially our children, by our words, with our prayers, and in our deeds. But here's the thing, God knows what he's doing. He designed us in a million different ways so that we could serve and connect, lead and relate to others. So God's will gets done. For some, it's writing and preaching. For others, it might be music. Maybe it's medicine or sales or teaching or woodworking or whatever it is that God is leading you to do. We all have a purpose and we will all affect someone in some way, whether we're trying to or not. This week, I'd like you to think about a time in your life when a small decision you made had a big impact on your life. And when you think of something, I would love for you to contact me. Write it in the comments or email me. Think about the thousands of moments when you made a decision that took you in one direction or another. You may tend to wonder where you would be today if you had chosen differently. It's remarkable, but God it lives in those everyday decisions. Those moments may not seem big or dynamic at the time, but as we think about them, we realize that the further and further we live away from these decisions, the bigger and the bigger impact it makes on our lives and the lives of those we come in contact with. This week, you could do something that could change the world. Maybe you'll encourage someone who will see something in themselves they hadn't seen before, and they in turn befriend someone who is on the verge of giving up on life, but now decides not to. Maybe you will decide to go down to your local library and read to a child or the children there, and one kid discovers a passion for language grows up to become a writer, and writes a book that influences millions. Maybe something you say will influence someone to make a different career choice. Or maybe someone else will be touched by something you do. You see, the possibilities are endless. You may never know the impact that you have had on the world, but God knows. Jesus tells us that God knows in the scripture reading that I asked you to read this morning. Lord, when did I feed you? When did I give you water when you were thirsty? When did I clothe you? And God replies, whatever you do for someone else, you do for me. Whatever you've been given, however you're wired, whoever you connect with and how you connect with them, it's all a gift from God. Every single thing you do, every flap of your wings, it matters. Whatever it is that God is encouraging you to do this week, I urge you to do it. God can create beauty out of ugliness, hope out of despair, peace out of war, life out of death, comfort out of pain, and order out of chaos. The presence of God in your life will affect every other part of your life. The jobs you have, the people you know, the way you handle chaos and crisis. So this week, go out and flap your wings and see what happens. I double dog dear you. Let us pray. Lord, may my words today create a ripple effect, bringing those who hear your message closer to you. 
We praise you and we pray these prayers today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it.